so okay guys we will uh, I will be demonstrating to you the design of purlins and design of truss using the stud pro so we got here a sample project so the dimensions of the building is like this along the longitudinal section it is 30 meters and 17 meters along the cross section the building heights the ground to the bottom cord is 6.45 meters and from the bottom cord to the apex is 3.7 meters so that would make the elevation of the apex 10.15 meters and the mean roof height of 8.3 meters the roof slope is 17.35 degrees <coughs> Berlin spacing is around 0 0.886 meters and truss spacing is 3 meters so for the struct for the structure category the occupancy category is number 4 standard occupancy the project location is in CDO which has a 270 kph wind velocity but later on we might want to use 250 so I'll be discussing that later on so for the loadings for the wind parameters again we will be using the SCE 7-10 for our local code, we are using the NSCP 2015. Importance factor 1 and exposure category B. This is typical for structures in urban area. So for the roof live load, we have 0 0.6. And the roof dead load, we have the roof framing, the corrugated roofing sheet, the ceiling, and the MEP. So... For the wind, uh, wind, wind load using the NSCP 2015, actually we have three procedures in the code. We have the simplified, simplified procedure, and then the analytical procedure, and then the advanced uh, procedure, which is called the wind tunnel procedure. But for this, for, uh, in this case, you'll be using the wind or the simplified procedure for the wind loads this is just but uh, fitting because uh, simplified procedure for the buildings with age of less than and or equal to 18 meters so for example project we only have this 10 meter uh, building height so in our NSCP there are steps, no? step by step procedure. So we'll start off with this one right here. So we have a gable roof. So in a gable roof like this, it is subdivided into three zones the zone one the zone 2 and the zone 3 and the zone 1 is the effective area for that is the middle part of the effect uh, middle part of the roof zone 2 is for the edges and zone 3 are for the corners now if you look at this table right here <coughs> you'll be using this table so earlier I said uh, CDO has a 250 wind velocity but in this table it is only 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 5 wind velocity uh, table columns so if you want to use a, a more exact value you might want to interpolate 
250 table and the 200, uh, 300 v, uh, kph table so already uh, use this row right here for the roof greater than 7 to 27 degrees so the values around here will be utilizing so once again we will be designing the purlins as well as the truss but first let us uh, focus first on this purlins purlins has an effective area of 3 times 0.886 now 3 is the spacing of the trusses and 0.886 is the spacing of the purlins so that would give us a 2.658 square meter of effective area for the purlins now by the way <coughs> going back to the wind load uh, calculation for the simplified method we are only using this uh, formula right here P net is equals to lambda times KZT and P net now in the simplified procedure we're going to use lambda value as 1 the exposure B and as well as KZT we also use 1 for, for P net lambda is 1 KZT is 1 right so 